Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement guide and this time we are getting it all in Rain City. A brilliant point and click adventure game developed by Cotton Games, published by eHome Entertainment and is available for a really awesomely low price of just $4.99. So, we play as a cat called, I don't know, let's call him Fluffnuts, who has to embark on a mission to find who his sister, who has gone missing. His sister, uh, I don't know, let's just call her Fluff Flaps. LOL! We have to go through a town where it always rains, hence the name of the game, meeting new characters and sorting out puzzles and mini games to get old Fluff to Flap. As for achievements, sorry. As for achievements, they are basically all missable, but they are very easy to get. Now, a lot of them include solving a puzzle first try and doing the same puzzle, but failing it ten times. It's a real mixture of feeling smart and dumb all at the same time. So, good job, game. Uh, but we can manipulate it, of course, by manually saving just before, and nothing is too difficult, so I really wouldn't worry at all. All in all, we're looking at around one to two hours to complete this, so... With that being said then, get your fluff nuts and fluff flaps ready, let us begin. So we're going to immediately start over, even though we haven't started the game at all, which always helps, and enjoy this mini cutscene. And I tell you what, rain must just really piss us off in this town. Not one day of sunshine goes by. No tan, everyone's like, you know, like Irish white, like proper, proper pale Casper Irish white. That's what everyone is in this town. Nobody can get a tan. It's fuming. And we are going to be getting one of those missable achievements straight away anyway, as soon as we enter the door. Basically, uh, now what I've done is edited it down some, but we basically need to speak to the landlord here ten times. He says the same thing every time, uh, but we have to speak to him ten times to get the curious achievement. So like I've said, all the ten times stuff I have edited it down, uh, just so you don't, you know have to watch me doing it and it's bloody boring when I do it so of course feel free to pause the video uh, just while you get the achievement so there we go should pop eventually so just speak to um, chunky cheeks right here and there we go we've got this one so press the left trigger to um, go into inventory press the A button to get it out and then just drag it over to where it needs to go pick up the key on your way up a key which is for using to unlock doors sorry to any druggies watching um, <laughs> we don't need the key here, so press the B button if you don't want to go in anything. And then just head to the right door. Again, left trigger, press the A button, drag it to the door. That is the majority of things that we'll be doing. That's normally how a point and click adventure game works, to be fair, so... Yeah, so once we're in our sister's apartment, uh, press the X button. Now, the buttons can be quite confusing in this game, and you'll see a little bit later on, but uh, press the X button to push it all the way to the right. Press A and A again and A again, and that'll get us the old headphones. And press B to just jump down, and then we can drag the stool all the way to the left. <laughs> drag. Don't drag your stool. You're not, a, <laughs> you're not a monkey in a cage, are you? In the zoo? <laughs> anyway, that meant two things. But anyway, grab the valve on top of the bookshelf and head out. Sorry. And what we can do now is just head up the old wooden piers. And we have to interact with this gate right here. Now it's locked, so we've got a few things to do. Uh, so what we're going to do is just head all the way back downstairs and talk to old Chunky Cheeks. So once we've spoken to him then, we can now just head on up and we can uh, talk to, well you don't have to talk to uh, Pepper Pig, oh man she really hit rock bottom didn't she Pepper, uh, before heading back into our sister's apartment and heading out the back. So if we head to the left, you can just see where we can put one of these valves. So you actually have to press the A button to click on it first. Doing what I'm doing now won't work. You actually have to click on the item and then press the left trigger. Go down to whatever it is that you want. There we go, eventually. And then just drag it over. Like I said, some of the button prompts and everything can be quite confusing. But uh, hopefully you'll get used to it. I'm sure you will. Because you are smarter than me, guaranteed. Anyway, to the right and just head all the way to the next door. We're going to speak to Alapaka Lama Man. 
because I forget which he is. He's an alp. I think he's an alpaca. Anyway, speak to the alp llama. Okay, and then just go into your inventory again, left trigger, and then press the A button to whip it out. Give him the. Oh, it was a wig. Oh my god, he's so bald, exactly like me. Anyway, we can now grab the wig, which he just put off, and we can put it on ourselves. So, go ahead, drag it to you, and all of a sudden, we've just t turned into a rabbit, which we are just the master of disguise, the master of deception. Anyway, out the door, and then up the stairs. You can speak to the rabbit if you want to, it doesn't really make a difference, I don't think. I think I'm pretty sure that we're just able to walk straight into the party, because... We are, again, the master of deception. So this is where the second missable achievement is. But first of all, we have to play this arcade game. It's very simple, so don't you panic your uh, test eye claws off about it. Uh, just keep hold of the A button. These first 14 enemies, they literally shoot like one P at you. It is literally like... I mean, what's that going to do? That's going to graze your nutsack slightly, and that ain't even going to hurt for once. Anyway, just kill these, and then there's one big boss who basically just shoots four peas at you, uh, but they are very easy to avoid and dodge. So, yeah, just keep smashing this one for now. When we win, we will get a gold coin. I wish it was that easy to make money, mind, I've got to be honest. So there we go, we are rich. I mean, if you've got a gold coin, you can probably make a lot more money from it. But anyway, we need to go to the vending machine next to it and use said gold coin, not to make yourself any more money, but to get some cigarettes on the floor. They're going to pop out, so grab, press the X button to uh, grab them this time. And that is exactly what I mean with the buttons. You think everything would just be the A button, but it's A, X, Y, whatever. Give the cigarettes then to this lonely rabbit. He looks like he's off his nut, which uh, he looks uh, a sad, lonely life. And here then is very important where I would make a save. Pick up the lighter, and then right here I would definitely make a manual save. Basically, for the drumming challenge, we have to score over 100 points. Again, it's very easy. There's only four button prompts, very much like a Guitar Hero and everything. Uh, but you've just got to hit it as the sort of... Um, thing comes on the symbol there, the item goes on the symbol, so you've got the left bumper, um, left bumper, down, A, and right bumper, so, uh, yeah, you've got to get over a hundred points to do this one, starts off slow, obviously, um, piles up a little bit quicker, but really, if you've, I failed this once, so, you should be okay, have a little practice go, uh, if you do fail, you can just reload your save, but, uh, yeah, get on it, I believe in you. And there we go, then that's Tidy Buff Bob Pants. We are all good, so as long as you've got more than 100 points, I think if you hit 100 points, that might be fine as well, but... Yeah, I mean, I hope it is anyway, because that would just piss you off. Anyway, so we should now have a lighter, and we should have a bucket for doing that, and the two achievements. Let's put the bucket by the vending machine, press the Y button here to jump up on said bucket, and grab the toilet roll. Why somebody's put toilet roll on the vending machine, I've got no idea. But basically, if we head to the left door, give it a little knocky-knock. Oh no, Doggy is taking dumpers. 
Bad boy, go outside. Don't go in the toilet. Um, anyway. Uh, grab the toilet roll from your inventory, drag it over, and... Ah, you smelly bastard! I could smell that from under the door, but you opened the door and I seen your big, fluffy, doggy pubes and... Well, that's not a sight that a cat rabbit wants to see. A cabbit. Anyway. Ugh. Dirty bastard didn't even flush away the poop stains. Dirty git. Anyway, make sure to grab the toilet roll anyway. Try not to uh, pick up the poop one. No, you don't need, don't need that in your life. And then put the bucket in the middle of the room. Don't grab it back. Very easy to do that, mind, if you're just spamming the A button there. Uh, put the bucket in the middle of the room. Then put the toilet roll in and then use the lighter on it. And what that's going to do is create a whole load of rain where everyone uh, gets out. And I tell you what, if he, since he didn't spray, it's just going to get this whole big shit stink in the room as well. So, they're not running because of the rain. Oh, no, 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 no. They had a waft of straight up their nostrils. Delicious. Anyway, there we go. Uh, you can't, you could sort of steal someone's drink if you really wanted to, but uh, we're just going to head out to the right. So, we are a cat once again. Now we're going to head back down and we can head back into the alpaca llama's house. Which is on the left, I'm going to give him a little conversation. And we've got his money. Now apparently if rent is five grand, that's friggin' expensive by the way. Uh, we could just, you know what, forget the sister. We'll just, uh, you know, go on a massive bender. But we're not going to do that because we love old fluff flaps. And um, it's probably wrong if you say it from a brother's perspective, but give the landlord the money, he will give us the key, so now we can head, uh, <laughs> Ugh, what you doing, step bro? Yeah, that kind of stuff. Anyway, now we can head all the way up, of course, no rabbits here, we can just use the key, and we can head up, and that is this first area done with. So once you've just headed through the stairwell, we're up into this new area and basically we need to find seven helicopter parts plus come up to another achievement. So we're heading into the middle sort of door first. Grab the lever off the desk. There is a ladder on the right we'll grab in just a moment. But basically we're going to do this small puzzle. So if you want to know the outcome, just skip ahead to around 13 minutes 30 seconds. And when this bad boy opens up, grab the helicopter part out of it, and life is good for old Fluffnuts. Grab the ladder then, before we leave. Now there's no point trying to explain that puzzle, it's just always easier with stuff like that, just to um, tell you what to do, tell you to go to the solution. Now there's another helicopter part on the left hand side where we just were, so make sure to grab that and head back inside, uh, just into the stairwell. Get the lever out of the inventory. Well, actually, we need to interact with the electric box first, of course, your donkey's butt sack. And now we can grab the lever, pull that down, and that will chill the old electricity out. Right, now we're good. So we should now have two out of seven helicopter parts already. So what we're going to do is head into this middle sort of contrapment, open that up, and that'll be helicopter part three. Now, just below us, there's going to be another bunch of stairs. We're going to head down here, head through the blue door, and this is where the next missable achievements are. So, very important here, I would definitely make another manual save, uh, just in case you bollock this one up, like I did, funnily enough. I'm not going to show you the bollock up, but head to the machine on the right. Now, what you need to do is put the first top cursor to number five, so count up to number five, the second cursor in the middle there, all the way to the right on number eight, and then the bottom cursor to number 5, exactly the same as the top one, so 585, press the A button, 
and that'll get the crane working and you should unlock another two meaty, meaty achievements. Well, half meaty. But when all is said and done, you like it up the bum. Uh, no, we are going to um, <laughs> grab the ladder, put it exactly where Fluffnut is right here. Again, don't grab it away, piss an annoying piece of ting. Grab it there and then press the Y button again to do some climbing. And then press the A button to grab the fourth helicopter part. So that's it for this room. Again, a lot of really expensive looking tech you could just, you know, pop in your pockets and sell on for a couple of quid. But everyone's a good everyone's a good guy in games. Right, so we've got four right here. So what we need to do now is just head all the way to the right and go in to the helicopter. It doesn't look like a helicopter. It looks more like a submarine, but that's fine too. Um, grab the ladder out of your inventory again and put it to the left just where... I mean, he kind of looks like Dr. Eggman, but he is a dog. Big chunk... Big chonkers. Anyway, press X to go up the ladder, and then press A to grab the next helicopter part. Lots of friggin' helicopter parts. Drag the, Grab the ladder, of course, that's always important. We're gonna need that a couple more times. And then speak to Big Chonkers. So, Big Chonkers there grabs us yet another helicopter part. Go to the right just with this, uh dancing monkey is and that will be a seventh out of seven helicopter parts and then open up the hatch in the middle of the room now this part is it's not a hard puzzle it's just freaking annoying with the goddamn controls in terms of what you have to do is press the left trigger to go in into your inventory drag on whichever piece that you want to drag out uh, and then you can press the x button so as you'll be able to see here there we go. So press A to drag it out. Drag it to the side, and then you can press the X button to sort of spin it around, kind of Tetris style. And then you can press the A button to drag it in, and press the A button again. Um, and then you just keep pressing the left trigger then to go to the next one. And if you want to go to different pieces and different parts to spin them around or whatever, you just press the up and down on the left stick. That all it, that's all it is. But again, if you would rather not see me doing this and you'd rather just go to the end how about clicking your mighty mouses to around 19 minutes and five seconds yes it took me that long because the controls well they were clunkier than a big clunky man sticking his clunky boy up a clunky nostril whatever the hell that means i don't know but still you get me get my drift By the way, can you believe we're doing everyone's job for them? That's mad, isn't it? Why does that happen in every video game? Anyway, speak to Big Chonkus right here, and we should be good to go. Sort of. So, a stranger helps him and he can't even be asked to make sure all the propellers are working properly. You, my friend, are disgusting! Anyway, we need to head all the way back up to the top, to the uh, wallway, hallway, 
wall stairs, stair walls, can't even remember what they're called, drag the ladder, climb up them, and grab the fan. Who knew a simple fan would work as a, you know, multi-thousand, multi-million pound helicopter? Who knew? There you go then. Cheap repairs, I suppose, for any uh, helicopter pilots listening. I wouldn't advise it personally, but that's fine. Now we can just head back to Big Chonkus and uh, drag that fan on and make it work as a propeller, apparently. Speak to the old Big Chonk again, and we are on our way to the next area. Lovingly, jubbingly, jobbably blue. So we're just going to head down and down. Jesus Christ, when does the rain stop in Rain City? Couldn't it be called, you know, 30 degrees Sun City? Although that would have pissed a lot of people off as well. Anyway, Big Chunk is going to head back up. He's fine. Now we've got this, um, I don't know, that, that kind of looks like Courage the Cowardly Dog or something from here. But maybe I'm just being blind. You don't have to speak to him if you don't want to. I accidentally did. Because, you know, point and click. It's what happens when you spam the A button. But we can just head in through this door. The only door we can go in. Right, we are coming to another missable achievement here. Speak to Hans Mollman, who, uh, well, he got a little worse from his days from The Simpsons. But we need to scare this mouse, and we need to scare it, guess what, a total of ten times. So you can just head sort of halfway down the stairs, wait till the mouse pops up, and then just go back until he gets in his little hidey hole. Uh, we will need to try and fist a hole later, but, um, you know, without Hans Moleman looking, because no one's gay for Mole Man. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, we just have to do this a total of ten times. Scare the mouse until the achievement jumpy unlocks. Again, feel free to pause the video. I've done it, of course. I've edited it down, so it'll be less than ten times for me. Uh, so, again, feel free to pause the video here. Um, now, what we need to do when we get the achievement, drag the box from the right all the way to the left and grab the hanging thing. Again, you think you could just do a, a, a cheeky jump, but apparently not. So, jump up in the box, grab the hook, jump back down and then drag this same um, chest of drawers, whatever the frig it is. Not all the way to the right, but sort of... Because as you be, basically what we need to do now is get the mouse out of his hidey hole and for him to piss off to the left side so we can fist his hole and grab the um, antenna inside it. But as you can see, pushing it all the way to the right doesn't work. You need to grab it just sort of in line there with the big furnace ting at the back. Roughly about anyway. So, uh, you know, roughly about here is fine. So we're just going to wait a few seconds for him to pop off to the left. And then we're going to do some fisting, some dry old wall fisting. Happy days, pick up the antenna, and then that is good, we don't need the mouse. Again, make sure you've got the jumpy achievement before we head on. Right, come downstairs, and next to this sort of floor vent, um, in, in your inventory, put the hook in it. And that is going to grab us a key. Funny looking keys, who the hell designed these? Anyway, use that same key on the red machine right here. And that is going to get us a, another item for us to pick up, the magnet. And, oh, Hans Moman is fuming! Give Hans Moman the antenna anyway, and then we can pick up his old antenna. Look, he's very happy now. Now we can watch his old rerun days of his time on The Simpsons with his millions of dollary news. So, again, he's just put the old antenna right next to the TV. For some reason, I missed that because I am... Um, I'm not Big Chonkus, I'm Big Mongus. There we go. <laughs> so I've got the antenna. Now we can just put everything together. So just press the A button when you're in the inventory and then press it on the magnet and do the same thing there. Press the magnet on the hook and that gets us like a fishing line type thing. So head back up the stairs now. It's a bit finicky sometimes the control with walking upstairs as well. Kind of like he's 
drank a bottle of vodka just before he climbed the stairs and now he's all over the show but um, press A to look out the window and then use your newly, f newly acquired fishing magnet line that's going to get us that's supposed to be like a statue of Barity or something When we've got what we need, we can just head back downstairs and right next to the machine, we are going to use our newly acquired lever item. I think that was supposed to be a torch, but the rain blew that out. Funny. And that will get rid of some of the water. So we've still got quite the puzzle to do to get rid of the rest of it. Why is there electric in water anyway? Man, this town is run like a absolute crap snatch. Crap sack, I meant to say then, rather than snatch. Same thing, right? Anyway, we can now head down this uh, hidey hole right here. Now, this puzzle may look confusing at first, but since you're following a guide, it's not, not going to be that confusing at all, happily. We're going to head down, and we've got to pick up these five loose tiles, first of all. So when you pick up all these five loose tiles, head all the way back up both ladders. Oh yeah, and uh, push the box down as well. That comes in mega handy for doing that. It helps us to get out, to be honest, as well as our puzzle, which we need to be doing now. So grab your tiles and then put them actually on the water. Because then what we can do is just skip ahead without being electrocuted. I tell you what, video games and their um, you know physics and everything just come in oh, mega handy for us all the time. I wouldn't advise it in real life. Anyway, grab these uh, little bits of pipe coverings or whatever the hell they are off uh, Winnie the Pooh the Winnie the Pooh statue right there and we can head back down now this is the puzzle again can be sort of complicated if you're doing it on your own but since you're not well let me show you how to do it for a nominal fee that'll be five pounds each please no, uh, what we actually need to do is use the magnet, when, when we push the box out of the way there use the magnet and grab this water valve or this regular valve there we go, eventually that'll pop in. Tidy Bob Buff Pants. Right, to push the box all the way to the right. And what we can do is use that valve just on the right hand side. Sort of, well, valve, I suppose. Use the valve, use the wheel on the valve, yeah. My God, my English is disgusting today. Just like every day. Anyway, jump up on the box and then press the X button to turn it. That's going to flood the room slightly. What it's also going to do is pop us all the way up, which is exactly what we need. Now, if you just press the left or, or right on the D-pad to go, you can go um, back and forth. But basically, what we need to do is press the A button here. Well, <laughs> you do need to press the A button there just to put the first pipe on. So make sure the first pipe is there. Then head all the way to the left. Press the B button to jump off, and then press the X button, or the A button, sorry, to put the water down ever so slightly. Jump back on the box. Go to this first set of pipes, or the second set of pipes right here, and press the A button to put another bit of pipe in here. And just go ahead and go to the next one to put the next pipe. There we go. Head down, uh, head left once again. Jump off. And then lower the water uh, once again. Jump back in, and then we can head all the way now to the right this time. Quite close to the water valve, but this is where we need to put the next pipe. And there is actually one that I miss, which is on the very bottom. Um, I do miss it, but I'll tell you exactly where it is now. It's literally, as we just um, drain the water twice, we need to drain the water twice. And just behind the box is where you need to put the next pipe. So push the box out of the way ever so slightly, and you'll be able to see the gap. There it is. That's where you need to put the pipe. So, um, basically, when you put the pipe there, you still do everything that I do. So, push it all the way to the... Push the box all the way to the right. Um, grab the wheel by pressing the A button this time, rather than the X button. Heading back up, and then using the wheel on the valve uh, just next to the sort of arrows right here. So, pop that one in. Plop, there it is. Now, when you press the X button... For God's sake, damn it, stupid-ass controls. I'm not angry. 
Now, what's supposed to happen is a bit of water's about to spout out. But, of course, because I was a bit of a uh, big mongus right here, again, I'm trying not to let you down and, you know, show you the wrong ways. I'm just being a big mongus today. <laughs> but I finally put, the <laughs> finally put the pipe in. Now, when we press the X button, the rest of the water will clear. Life will be as golden as nuggets for us. Okay, once, once we're up here then, just go all the way to the right. You can faintly see some stairs, but that is where we're going to climb up. So we're into the next area now. Don't worry about this door. That one's locked for the time being, but we can head to the middle door. Now, first thing we need to do, I'm not sure if this is a prerequisite or not, but um, it, it seemed to be the only way it worked for me. So we head up upstairs into the first room, into the, uh, well, looks like we've hit a weed center right here. Well, the police will have a great field day with this, won't they? Anyway, when you um, just go into the middle of the room there, close to the welcome sign, we're going to end up in this shower after getting high as a goddamn ca I'm dizzy. That's called high, mate. Okay? So, uh, when we're done here anyway, we can now actually head out. So, you can have your shower if you want and freshen yourself up so uh, you don't get paranoid that any police are walking past you. Uh, then we can head down and basically go through the blue door on the right. And we're going to speak to this sheep goat thing. Whatever the hell that's meant to be. Again, I'm not sure if you can just speak to this uh, sheep goat immediately. Or that you have to actually go up into the weed room. But uh, there you go. When, when we speak to him, then we can go into the left hand side and speak to this mad scientist mouse. Now you can't speak to the scientist first because this... Um, Option and these dialogue options won't appear and we won't be able to get the beaker off him as well So that's why we have to do it in that particular order But now we can come back and we are actually coming up to another Missable achievement one of those ten times and then do it on the first time try so head back up to the right I do save my game here, but you can save the game just before we start it anyway It doesn't make a difference and because you'll always start just by the exit right here anyway so Again, like I said, manually save, very important, but when we come here, now that we've got the old uh, jar beaker, what we're going to do is come into this new area. Now, we have to get to the other side. Now, for one of the achievements, like I said, we have to get through to the other side first time, but once again, the whole ten time things, what we can do... Oops. <laughs> Sorry, my editing skills are lacking today, apparently. Um, but what we can do, when we enter this area, we can just keep um, spamming the A button. Uh, just keep spamming the A button. And basically, when you do this ten times, we are going to uh, end up back in the shower right by the exit, just close to the welcome sign again. So this is what it means by a failed attempt at the maze. So you'll be able to see... I was doing it a bit quick, sorry there. But you'll be able to see how many times you've um, gone through each door. So if you fail more than ten times... Um, you get kicked out back to this screen. So you have to do this particular scene um, 10 times. You, you basically, you can just keep going until the achievement unlocks and then reload your save. But uh, like I said, I'm not showing you all of the 10 times because that just sort of wastes 5 minutes. So again, feel free to skip forward, pause the video until you get to the next point and keep going until the achievement unlocks. But this is the easiest way I've found it. Just keep spamming the A button. You'll just keep going through each each door. Luckily, you don't come across, like, you know, swingers parties and stuff like that. Although, then again, I wouldn't be uh, too disappointed to come across with it. You know, because I love swings and stuff. The swing sets are just fantastic. Solid oak wood. Mwah! Magnifico. Right then, so once you've done this ten times, like I said, it should take you no more than around sort of five, six, seven, eight. My Eugene baby is driving me correct. Uh, uh, minutes, sorry. Um, <laughs> but when the achievement <laughs> unlocks, you can now reload your last save, which I hope you put a manual save down. 
And then we can just go back into that same room. Don't worry that you start a little bit further back. Uh, don't panic, you should still have all your items and everything. But now, like I said, we've got to do this first time. And honey, baby, boys and girls, I wouldn't steer you wrong. I'm going to kind of have twice already in the video, so I apologize. But um, not this time. So this bit's owl good. Uh, we're just going to head all the way to the left door. Right, let's do it in this particular order. So first one, we are going down. So head down, and there we go. Next, go left. Next, we're going up. And then we're taking another left. Next, go down. And then just head to the left again. Go up this time. Okay, then go right. Then we're going up. Up, up and away. And then we're heading to the right. And that is what you should do to unlock the achievement. And if you don't unlock it, or you made a mistake, just reload your, say, uh, reload your save and just go through that bit. When we get here, we're going to get this uh, big weed-infused fungi of life. Doesn't look like a very fun guy to me. Looks like a shit guy. Looks like a sick guy. But when we do that, we've scraped up the mushroom. Now we can just head out of the... Uh... Oh man, all the weed stopped. It's because we got it in this jar. Uh, basically, we need to give it to the mad scientist who... Kind of looks like Professor Frink's father in that Simpsons Halloween episode. Not even. Anyway, down the stairs, sorry, we can head to the left door and give the jar to Professor Frink's father. There we go, and he's going to get off his nut. Oh, actually, sorry, no, there's one more thing we've got to do before he gets off his nut, but he's going to give us this whole uh, speech about... Compounds, experiments, and yada, yada, yada. And we just have to do, again, very simple puzzle, this one. I like puzzles that look like they're going to be complicated. And then they're just easier than pissing your pants like. So um, head down to this table. Now all you need to do is check the bottom left, top middle, and bottom right. So as soon as you do that, so bottom left, top middle, bottom right. Um, this is going to happen automatically. And basically, this is one steroid-infused angry man. Now, that is not what you want to be crawling through your home when you're trying to take a nap or a poop. Give the syringe, anyway, to these mad scientists, and this is the point he loses his absolute nut butters. Oh boy, Professor Frink's father's lost it and wiving. Uh, so we're French for a second for some reason. Ignore that though, we can just head out and go straight back into the blue room door. And we're going to speak to the sheep. He's all good. Man, what a what a house this is. One sheep with an old room. And looks like he's on death's door. And right next door is a big laboratory. Jesus Christ. What an odd bunch. Sounds like an American sitcom. Anyway, when we are done with the dialogue, we can... He gives us a key. So, once we head out of here, we can now use our new sheep goat key. And use it on the lock, which was locked in the first place. Funny enough, it's mad how locks work these days, right? And then we can just head down by pressing the A button. Now, this bit... Could have all been avoided if our uh, little uh, fluffy nuts friend right here actually used a chair to climb on something instead of doing it the awkward way, as you'll see. But as we jump down, uh, Nick Fury from the Marvel films will come and have a chat with us. This is what I imagine Nick Fury would look like just because he's got the eye patch. Anyway, try and head right and he's going to be like, Hey, you get out of there, you damn kid. Speak to this guy. He's obviously fuming. Miner's life is a hard life. Try and go to the left. And then speak to Nicholas Fury once more. Nick Fury. Eventually we do. There we go. 
Uh, you have to do that basically for the uh, next part of the story to progress, which is that bit. Explosion! And when I say explosion, some guy just fell. Unlucky mucker. But we gotta save the day now. So now we have free reign of the mines. We can head all the way to the left. And into this new area with an elevator. We'll be coming back here a couple of times. So press A and then up on the D-pad to go up. Up, up, up in the way. Where the music is my favorite. Uh, what we can do is grab this can of water. A greeny leaf water, apparently. That sounds appetizing. And then just drag this empty car, drag it onto the elevator. And then we can head down. So press A on the elevator and press down on the D-pad. Um, yeah, that, that water apparently kind of just reminds me of fizzing, sparkling water. Who goes into a shop and goes, you know what? Quench my thirst, let's get a nice big bucket of sparkling, fizzing water. Jesus Christ, don't trust those guys. <laughs> Anyway, we push the cart off and we're heading back up into the elevator. Sorry, getting a little ahead of myself there. Now this is where we can just push the chair and grab the plank we need, but instead we're going to head out. We're going to head back in to and through the middle door. Eventually. E there we go. So straight back through the middle door. We're going back into the mine section. We don't have to visit the sheep. And we can't visit the scientist because he's off his nut. Um, again, press the X button here. This is what I mean, that the controls are so tetchy and they just they just change on you. They just do it to piss you off, I'm sure. Um, but once we are down here then, basically what we can do now is head all the way to the left. The elevator was blocking our entrance, of course, as we'll be able to see. So head left. And now we can grab the empty cart and drag it all the way to the left into another new area. Press the B button to get off, and then speak to this guy, and he's a little thirsty, he needs that some of that oh, fizzing sparkling water, only the poshies drink, you know. Don't do regular council water, you know, that disgustingness. Anyway, when he uh, nips off, we can grab the shovel, and then we can immediately use the shovel, and do more than what he seemed to be doing there. But, like I said, it's a hard work being a miner's life, but look how quickly we fill that up. Two shovels! Uh, since we've done everyone's job for me, might as well do these sons of bitches as well. Anyway, now we've got a full empty, a full empty cart, a full cart. We need to push it past the elevator, and basically we need to head all the way back up, and up back up into the offices. Okay, when we are here then, what we can do now is just head back down the elevator, of course. Like I said, there is literally a chair right there. We could have just pushed that over, grabbed the plank, and avoided all of this, but, um... You know, such is life. We all like to make uh, life difficult for ourselves sometimes, don't we? For some odd reason. Anyway, grab the cart, pull it on, and then head back up with the full coal cart. And then you know exactly what's going to happen here. We need to drag that, push that all the way to the right, and then grab the plank. So there we go. We've just done in five minutes what we could have done in 30 seconds. But hey, no, nobody's complaining. It's, a, it's still a good game, which I'm happy with. Anyway... Drag the coal cart on and go down the elevator, escalator, bing bang bo, once more. And then this time we are doing it another little big push all the way to the right this time. So once we get to this area, stop just underneath the uh, where, where would be a missing hook. And then we can now speak to this guy once again to progress the story ever so slightly before heading to the right. 
Now that we've got our plank, what we can do is use the plank with the gap in between. We're not rescuing him, we're just going to bury him, we'll just chuck him under a bunch of coals. He'd be fine. Apart from the dead bit, but he'd be fine. So into this new area, climb down, and then we can use the crane. The digger. Nah, no, I think it's more of a crane, isn't it? So jump on. All we need to do is go forward by pressing left or right in the D-pad. And then just press the Y button to flick the switch on. That's all we need to do for this particular moment. Push it forward ever so slightly um, because we need light in order to grab this sort of hook and chain right here. You can't grab that without the light, which is why we, funnily enough, that's why we grab the light. Right, head back up. We will be grabbing that crane in just a bit, doing some game vid video game physic defining stuff. But for now, we're just going to head around old Nick Fury right here. Nick Fury. And then what we can do is grab our new hook and chain and then chuck it on top. That will um, bring up the coal cart. And then just with the machine just under it, we need to be pushing that up to chuck it all the way to the other side. Follow that cart, baby. All you had to do was follow the damn cart, fluff nuts. Sorry, pal, just uh, getting all the way around you there. So head all the way to the right once again, since it's gone all the way to the right. Now, again, the controls may be a little bit odd, but what we need to do is basically just push the light all the way up until it's uh, hitting the coal cart. So, again, go right on the D-pad, and then if you press the left bumper and the right bumper, that is where you can use the other controls. So you need to put the light all the way up, until it's facing the coal cart, press the A button. Press the A button. There we go. And then somehow, this crane is one of the most magical pieces of equipment ever known to any animal, man, or anything. <laughs> Keep pressing left on the D-pad to go to the other side. And the cutscene will begin. Legendary video game design mechanics. Gotta love them. But that's it um, for our adventures here. Uh, we can just get out, move all the way to the left. Uh, basically, we're going to get a little help. We can head all the way back up now as well. And we're going to be visiting this area one last time, but basically head up the steps and then head into the middle room. Uh, again, we don't need the weed room. We've got our... Uh, Daily dose of highness all there. And then we can just speak to Nick Puri and his pal. And basically he's going to give us a key. Which we can get. Which we can use to go past the mine now. Can you even English? I ask. And they say, no, I'm just a dog, or whatever the hell that was. What? Anyway, we got the key, let's head down the mine, let's stop doing silly voices now. This is supposed to be a professional guide, you know. Hmm? Head back down, and then we're just going to go all the way to the right, into the final room where the excavator was, or this big crane digger thing. But make sure to be grabbing the plank before you leave. We're going to need that to get into the next area. Uh, don't think it'll make a difference. I'm not sure if you can actually come back to this area um, if you do it. But anyway, use the key on the door with the digger with the digger thing out the way, and then we can head through. Just wondering if you forget the plank can you go back oh yeah you'll be able to go back anyway but um we need to use the plank for this bit but again if you do forget it you can just go back apparently and grab it so not a big issue try not to grab the stupid thing again with the stupid controls press the x button to go up this time mm, that'd be nice uh, but we're coming up to sort of the final areas ish 
but we've got quite a bit to do now. So press the B button to head down, coming up to another missable achievement. But what we'll do is head over to the sink on the right and then just keep pressing left or right on the D-pad. I think it's right on the D-pad. And we're just going to grab the tap. Basically, we're breaking shit as we go. That's pretty hardcore of us uh, there from Fluffnuts. Head into the toilet, and as you can see, it hasn't been cleaned for a while. But we need to use our new sink tap and then grab the ID out of it. It's... Well, it's covered in... What's meant to look like gravy, but we all know that is the old diarrhea dumpuses. Head over back to the sink, grab the ID. And that'll clean it, but what it'll also say is the code at the bottom there, 527. And that is the code that we need to enter into this locker. But what we need to do, once again, we're going to make a manual save because we need to input the wrong code 10 times and then reload and then input the correct one first time. So, thankfully, there's not a lot of, you know, minutes wasted uh, doing it this way. But literally, all you, all you have to do, you can just keep... Um, Going left and right on the same one and just keep um, bashing the A button there. Makes no difference. Again, I, did I... No, I don't. I didn't edit it this, this one down because it takes no time at all. Oh, well, as you can see there. So, <laughs> yeah, literally. Takes no time at all. But when you do that again, back out and then we're just going to go ahead and reload. By pressing the A button. I assume you would have known that by now since you got this far. Uh, we are going to start up here, but don't worry, again, we've got the ID and every tang. We just need to go back to the locker. Now, it's not numbers, it's kind of um, all, all these weird things. So, put the, the sort of three-headed creature, then the hooded creature, and then the next one is like a scary, like, jack-o'-lantern type thing. You know, scary jack from Nightmare Before Christmas. I think that's the one. My sister's obsessed, I don't really know much, I'm... Silly that way. Anyway, you should get the achievement. Again, sorry if that was a little bit quick there, guys. Uh, but then grab the remote control toy and then grab it out. Drag it on the floor. Grab the control. And you can, again, you use the A button to pick things up. And then the left and D-pad button to move uh, left and right yours. So, drag him under the sink. And then we have to go into the next area by climbing up, as you can see. And then pressing the A button to go into the next area. So, we can stand up, we can drag the control out, and then we can go right on the D-pad and get this hook. So, press the A button close to the hook, and then we're going to be dragging all the way back through the hole. So, stick that meaty chain through the hole. Here, Ramon. <laughs> no, press the B button to get back down. And then we can just pick our remote control toy back up again. Lovely. And now we can drag the chain all the way to the middle of the room. And to be fair, we have got some epic strength, does old Fluff and Nutters Butters. Anyway, heading back up by pressing the A button. Again, this is again one of those sort of uh, back and forth sections, really. But next, this time, we're going to choose the X button. We're heading down into the next area with the security guard and a couple of scientists. Um, again, drag the um, toy card down. And then we are going to use the control, and we're going to grab the lever, which is just on the right-hand side here. So, again, apparently they've got no issues with things being stolen or seemingly stolen as we head through the left-hand door. And then we'll do the same, head through the left. Not a very good security guard, since he couldn't see what the hell's happening. But it looks like his hat was over his eyes for some reason. Anyway, we're heading down, and we're going to pick up the remote control toy. With the X button. You can press the A button. I think I accidentally do here. Yes, I do. Um, but he obviously doesn't go through. Again, even though we can see us opening up. And uh, around his... His... This is his remote control toy, by the way. So, I don't know why he doesn't get suspicious. But... So, just life works in our favour. So, we're going to drag him down again. And we are going to use the remote control, of course. And we are heading straight back down through that same door. So, press the A button when you're down there. And then, again, we're going to head back up. Uh, it's a lot of up and down and all around and sing your songs and lick a clown. Press the X button to go back down into the next room. All right, Tidy Bob Buff Pants. Okay, what we need to actually do here, we need to use the lever on the big sort of machine straight in front of us. 
So that is what we're doing. So we ignore the control. Apologies about that. So grab the lever, put it there, and we actually need to push that lever down. Very important that we push it down. Otherwise, this next bit just won't work. As you can see now, the buckets are going the opposite way. Uh, full of oil, which is exactly what we need. So heading back, and we're going to go basically to the right in, the, uh, in this new area. So we can jump down, and we're just going to be grabbing this plank. Plankton. Plankton. And then we can just head back up and head to the left. So with our newly acquired piece of wood, uh, we're going to drag that and put it uh, just on top of the uh, lockers and everything right there. So now we can crawl into the right. And then we can just pick up the screwdriver. Again, wouldn't matter if we die. Pretty sure we've got nine lives left since we only look at, like two years old or something. Two years old in cat lives, I mean. And so as we head back up, we are now going to head all the way to the right again. So we're pressing the A button. Old Fluff Nuts, he saves the day by being so key. Jumping down then, and now we can actually push this uh, trailer of nonsensical crap. Uh, nonsensical, sorry. Not nonsensical. Whoops. Wrong word. <laughs> Wrong choice of words. Use the screwdriver on the vent above, and now we can climb up, and that is going to get us the crowbar, which of course is what we need, uh, because we're going to go break some legs, bitch! Break them! Yeah, it's not that kind of game, actually, so we're not going to break legs, bitch. What we are going to do is, so grab the crowbar, drag the trailer back to the original hidey hole, so we can climb back up and head back to the left. And when we arrive, we're just going to go ahead and press the X button to go down the next screen. We're going to let Officer... <laughs> Officer Bark, we are going to use the crowbar and we're going to use it on a bucket full or a pot full of oil. So just smash it down there. That is going to burn him. <laughs> Man, that shit looks like it hurts. And that's good. So now we're good. This basically isn't a time section, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. But as we head down, again, pressing the B button there, um, we can go into not this locker, sorry, but the one on the very left. Going to grab his... Filthy, stanky uniform. Give that a little rinse off. And then apparently we're just going to put that straight on anyway. So, um, we're stinking, but who cares, man? We got we got shit to do. Now we are free to roam. Again, the scientists don't realize that the cat, the dog is changing into a cat. Works well in our favor. And head down into the next door after picking up your toy. And then just press this big red button. Head into the elevator. And then choose level B2. B2 or not B2? Crap, wrong way, never mind. No, wait, I got it. B2 or not B2? That is the question. Nah, never mind, that's suck donkey nuts. Grab the toy out again and the remote control and then go right and then just go into the first cell, which is the very left one there. And we are actually going to pick up these sweets. Random bag of delicious looking sweets just chilling out in a cell underneath the bed. Why has nobody found them? Who knows? Anyway, press the B button to escapey mode and then pick up your toy, um, toy cart with the sweets. Apologies if they've all gone by the time we actually have to try and save my fluff flap sister. Again, sounds weird when you... Seen it from a brother's perspective, but uh, not when you're in a Pornhub step bro step sis type situation. So going up to B uh, to one, sorry, level one. Sorry about that. I was uh, again getting ahead of myself. Use some of the sweets by the stairs right here. This is all very good, and it all makes sense. Put the ID to the left hand side door. So again, just make sure you got the sweets by the door, and that the door is unlocked on the left by using the ID. Grab the apple next to Officer Bark. Bark Simpson. And then head down. And we can just head out the left-hand side door now. So the mad scientist. This is where he ended up. Uh, Frank's father. In the Halloween episode, he's looking for spines. In this one, he is looking for a couple of sweets. So grab the ID and use it with the door. And then you can just open that one up. 
obviously we're going to need it open. And then grab the apple we just got from Officer Bark Simpson. And then uh, put it on the floor in the middle. Eventually he's going to be like, Oh man, this will, <laughs> this will quench my hunger. One puny ass apple. So next we need to grab the sweets. Luckily there's plenty of them. And grab them, put them by the door over there. For some reason this may take... I don't know if you've got to speak to him or... You know, after about 10 seconds or so, he realises that there are some chunky chewy boys to chow down on. So he's good. So he's now going to nip in there as well. So we're obviously going to follow him. And this bit is all automatic. So just enjoy the cutscene as Frank's father uh, gets everyone to shit in their pants. So when we go upstairs, interact with the button just behind Professor Frink's father right there, and that means all the doors are open up. By the way, our sister is in the third, the rightmost third cell, so that's where we're going. So back down to elevator, we'll leave Frink's daddy, um, just chill out there, I suppose. And then, of course, head down all the way to B2 once again. B2 or not B2? That is the big poo. Hmm. Well, yeah, that went just as well as lead hitting the floor. So head all the way to the third rightmost section and enjoy the cutscene. Oh my god, it was big chunkus all along. What an absolute donkus. So, turns out he is the bad guy all along, which, you know, that happens a lot through video games. Why do characters trust these other people? They always end up biting them on a butt snatch. So anyway, we can head into the excavator now, and this is where old Fluff Flaps is hiding. Hurrah, my Fluff Flaps sister. And of course, if you're watching this on Pornhub right now, hey, step sis, what you doing? Nothing much, Step Bro. Just being kidnapped. Oh, let's let's do stuff together. Etc. You know the drill by now. Anyway, her name's not Leah. It's Fluff Flaps. Okay. Right. So what we need to do is give her a couple of the sweets because apparently after not eating for days, a couple of jawbreakers or whatever the hell they are, that is sustainable nourishment. All kids will be happy to know that. So if you haven't eaten for a couple of days, a couple of sweets down here. Ah, oh, you'd be right as rain. Um, but she gives us what I thought was a flashlight first. If you don't know what that is, just, just Google it. And apologies if I just <laughs> offended anyone there. But it is one of those actual UV lights. So drag it over onto this code right here. And we can see um, the particular code which is doing. And that is 168B. So 168B with a UV blue flashlight. Sorry, I'll stop saying that. Press A to interact with the helmet, and that can get us into the next area. So head out. We've only got about 15 minutes left of the game now, which is always bang tidy. Head into the next area then. We'll leave our fluffy flatnesses right there for the time being. Now we've got to put our helmet on, so go ahead and do that. And then just press the X button to dive down. Now this is totally unrealistic, because no cats would do this. Although this is a cat that speaks, so it's like a half-human hybrid weird thing, I suppose. Go up <laughs> to the only path, and we are going to be coming up to another achievement, actually. Again, all missable. Every single one is missable in here. But what we need to do is stand behind, directly behind, these two moving machines, two cranes. Um, Fluffy Nuts is going to get out of the way automatically, so all you have to do is literally just stand behind them. Come on, come on, I got death to do, man. Okay, and now 
it may take a little bit of time, as you can see here, to unlock. Um, so I do uh, have a try on the third one, but eventually it will. There it is. So it decides to pop eventually. Safety first, so uh, avoiding the two trucks in the mine. Now we can go all the way to the right and speak to the um, son of the dying sheep man. Right, so heading out after that delightful little conversation's done. Uh, we need to go uh, to this sort of, again, excavator or whatever the hell it's called. This big machine right down in the middle there. Use the UV blue flashlight. Uh, sorry, UV light. And use it with the middle of the room. That's going to give us this box, which we can't open. But luckily, we've got two heavy trucks that can do the job for us. So grab the truck. Uh, grab the box, sorry. Interact it with the truck. And that is going to smash that open like a boy. And eventually when he moves forward, we can now grab this sort of uh, spanner type thing. Bolt, spanner, spanner, bolt. And then Sheep Blad is going to come and have another conversation with us. I say Sheep Boy, his name's actually Barry. <laughs> I'm so funny. Nat. Anyway, use the spanner that we just got with this uh, sort of lever on the left-hand side. And that's going to grab us the, funnily enough, it's going to grab us a lever. Thank God. And now we can just head back to the right. Basically, what we're doing is creating a big distraction for the CEO, the old Officer Chonkers, to get down. Um, head all the way to the right once again into where Barry's uh, office is. And then pass this truck into the next area. And then use the lever on the water uh, hose. Water hose will do. So anyway, that's going to fill that one up. So we've got a key at the bottom. Which, again, game physics are awesome. And why is somebody digging a random hole and just chucking a key down there? Surely you just keep it on you and then just burn it afterwards or bury it. But there we go. We can jump in. We can grab the key. And now we're going to be doing some hardcore Usain Bolt sprint style driving. Oh, actually, it's going to go, go about as slow as me when I'm jogging. Like a big, chunky mess. So use the key, of course, on the truck. That is how you usually get cars started. Top man, top bananas, press the A button to get in. And then just press right in the D-pad. That is what I look like when I run, by the way. Gas coming out of me and... It don't sound healthy at all. Yeah, that is just me down to a T. Oh, I can lift weights all day, but a bit of walking and running and I die. So, um, Barry, we are going to follow right now. Just, so I don't know why we couldn't have just gone directly behind him. We had to wait for him to piss off, but, well, such is life. Uh, you can you can have a look in this room if you want. Um, again, we're just, there's nothing we can do at the minute. We just need to speak to all Baz. Holy shit, dude! Explosion! Right, now we can go into the main room anyway, and now we can get the core that old Barry was after. So make sure to grab that. And look how pissed off uh, Big Chonkus is now. We have destroyed his truck, and to me, that's just hilarious when he destroyed the truck of someone who's on like a million pounds per year, and then all of his workers are on minimum wage. You can suck my balls, CEOs of every company ever. Except for the nice ones. Anyway, head back down to the left while all that's going on. Put your helmet on. Go for a dive. And basically, we're just heading back to where our sister is. Christ, all right, Barry. Less of the attitude, otherwise I'll be selling you to Tesco, or selling you to the butcher's mate. Although then again, I'd probably be sold uh, somewhere as well. So I'd watch my mouth if I was me. Right, heading to the old excavator. And then we can now use the core. Bam, job done. Right, 
Now, what I do here, I do make a manual save here, but sadly, what I just come to realize is it makes no difference. So basically, we are coming up to a boss fight now. Boss fight is generally as simple as literally eating a bloody piece of bread or something. It It is very easy, but once again, we do have one of those fail 10 times and then do it the first time. The only problem with that is um, when we save and we do the 10 time fails first, um, you can't actually load it. You can't uh, reload there. You can't actually pause the game to reload. You have to fight. You have to complete the... So when you die 10 times, sorry. When you <laughs> die 10 times, you have to complete the boss fight to then be able to reload um, to then just have to do the boss fight first try again. So it's up to you. If you want to do the boss fight first try and then just do the fail 10 times later on, of course, that is completely up to you. I, to be honest, I'm thinking that's the way I should have done it now, <laughs> thinking about it. But there we go. I'm showing you both ways anyway. So uh, this is where I highly recommend making a manual save if you haven't already, because this is the part before the boss fight. And again, so like I said, probably worth completing the boss fight first and then doing the fail 10 times after. For some reason, I do the fail 10 times first. But then I can't reload it because when we keep failing, it puts us back into this part where we cannot pause the game. So that is annoying as AIDS, really. But you press the A button to jump. Uh, you haven't got no guns or anything, but I will tell you what to do. So here we go then. What we are going to do is obviously just jump. We're just going to jump into him. And we're just going to jump into him 10 times until we unlock that achievement. The music sounds like it could be difficult, but it, it really isn't. So that's all we need to be doing. So we need to do that 10 times. But basically, um, as we are jumping on these platforms, he has these... Basically, he just has guns that shoot you. If you stand on the platform that we are currently on, um, that protects you from gunfire. But of course, he's coming up, so you need to uh, get platforms. Um, you need to keep jumping on platforms. Uh, keep going up and up and up. You need to grab barrels. You grab them automatically. And then you press the B button to drop them on his head. You have to do it on his head. Um, so, yes. So, the editing here is a bit of a um, nightmare, to be honest. So, we unlock the achievement anyway for dying in the boss battle ten times. Um, so, I literally put, it f uh, put the video forward about 30 seconds. Apologies that I don't show the boss fight at this particular point. This is after the boss fight. So again, I think I fudged up here in the in the sort of order and way I've done it. So again, apologies about that. Um, but off you go then, Fluff Flaps. We're actually going to reload. So go ahead and do that. And now, of course, is where I'm going to show you the boss fight. So, like I said, I've already apologized like a billion times. But I am again because I... Just realized I could have done this in a better order. But it's okay, because we're all getting the achievement anyway. So this part, with the whole dying 10 times and everything, it's going to take about 10, um, 10 minutes or so to do. Obviously, as you can see, I edited it down last time. So what we need to do then, if we just, um, again, it's the A button to jump, as we already know. And he's going to start going mad. Now, his gunfire won't aim for you specifically all the time. Sometimes he'll, he'll sort of shoot twice to the left and then start shooting twice to the right. So, it is easily avoidable. So, here we go then. Keep jumping up. And as you can see, when we're on these red and yellow platforms, um, he can't shoot us at all. So, we get uh, protected. So, grab the barrel. We do it automatically. And then just press the B button when you're on his head. And that gets one of his health down. So he's got five bits of health. We've only got three. But again, it's very easy. Just wait until the fire starts going to the left. Go ahead, grab the next uh, flammable barrel. Drop it on his head. And that is it. It should be the same layout every time as well. So even if you do die, just reload. Um, oh, in fact, you'll have to do it anyway and then reload your save. So hopefully you can just do this first time without the need to be reloading and doing it again.
And there we go then, guys and gals. So, yeah, either way, whichever way you've done it, hopefully you've done this one first and then failed ten times after, but whichever way you've done it, hopefully uh, you will have got those two achievements. There's, the only thing you've got left to do in the game now is just get on the helicopter, and that is the end of the game. So, I just want to say a big, huge thank you to everyone who uh, has watched and hopefully has helped this guide. Big huge thank you. Uh, again, hope you enjoyed the game. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a very, very good game. Fantastic. But I hope the guide helped as well. And if it did, don't forget, of course, to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend. Check me out on socials, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. Big, huge, massive thank you and shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. You guys and gals are absolute legends. And a big thank you to everyone who continues to support the channel, uh, regardless whether it's just commenting or liking or whatever. I appreciate every single one of you. So, thank you so, so much then, guys and gals. Well, I guess I'll see you in the next one, huh? Big love, babies. <laughs>